How is 5G changing the game for Edge, IoT, and Telco Cloud? And is the Edge Cloud a game changer for markets enabled by 5G? On this NMG hosted executive panel, we're joined by Andrew Coward. He's Chief Executive Officer of Lumina Networks. And next to Andrew is Arpit Joshapura. He's General Manager of Networking, Edge, and IoT, that at the Linux Foundation. And gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here. We were lucky to have a bit of a conversation before the sort of formalized setting here about uh, the, co uh, the, the core and moving out to the edge very, very quickly and how 5G is sort of facilitating and ex expediting that process. I wanted to get into a bit of that here. Arpit, I'll start with you to sort of the, set the stage for the audience out there that weren't privy to this previous conversation. Um, how is 5G changing the game for edge, IoT, and telco cloud? Sure, so 5G, People know it as bigger, better, faster, et cetera, right? But the most important thing in 5G that is relevant to this discussion is the latency. And extreme low latency, five to 20 milliseconds range of latency drives a whole different set of applications. And these applications now require compute and storage close to their uh, uh, environment, right? And so now all of a sudden what's happening is the compute and storage, in other words, the stack comes close to the app. They can be put all the way on-prem or at the telco edge or edge cloud or smart cloud or there are a thousand names. At the end of the day, if you put compute and storage close to you know 20 milliseconds of turnaround for an app, that's the edge location. And that's a game changer completely because mm. that's enabled by 5G. Mm. And all of a sudden, you have your entire cloud at your disposal close to you. Yeah. Right, right. Well, and of course, everything that's happening with 5G for the early deployments we've seen is just basically turning on 5G radio. What we're talking about is taking advantage of the technology and this move to the edge to basically enable these apps. Or to put it another way, none of these carriers are going to be able to monetize um, this 5G network unless um, they're able to turn on more services, um, IoT devices, more applications, and the place to do that will be at the edge. Uh, you had both mentioned uh, some use cases that are enabled by 5G, these sort of uh, uh, game-changing technologies and how Edge Cloud plays a role in that. Can you just give, just for the audience, can you give us maybe one of those use cases as an example so they can wrap their head around what that means? Uh, sure. Um, it's, it could be uh, an application that uses video, uh, but it's not a YouTube, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So uh, 360, uh, AR, VR, drones moving around, beaming things, security, uh, venue, uh, real-time uh, uh, displays, mm -hmm. uh, anything. You know, I summarize all next-gen killer apps in, in sort of two ways. Anything that is video and high bandwidth that requires low latency, but it's not YouTube. Mm -hmm. And anything that is connected to the network and that moves, but is not a phone. Mm. Right? Interesting. Use case? Well, right, so well, let's pick up on the AR example, right? So when you have a headset on and you're kind of moving around, um, you need extremely low latency. You need the network to keep up and the applications to keep up so that you don't get dizzy. Um, and so you either have to have compute right there next to you, or you have to have it very close to you. Uh, and so for, for that reason, um, a lot of these new applications will require that local compute um, you know, w within a mile, two miles of where you are, just to deliver that low latency so we don't all get dizzy. Arpit, uh, in the discussion that I mentioned at the top of the segment that we had prior to this, um, you talked about a term called network service mesh. So two parts. One part is explain to our audience what that is, but the second part is you describe it as being uh, sort of one facet of, or sort of one spoke in the wheel, and then reference glue as maybe a descriptor of what NSM is in that wheel. Can you describe that for us? Sure, so let me put NSM in context of, I would say, you know, 5G readiness, if you may. So there's tons of technology pieces, right? Open source components, software components, hardware components that need to be ready. Uh, as you get to 5G and Edge, right? NSM is one of them. Now, think of, um, you know, uh, uh, a, a move to containers, right? As we move to the Edge, uh, containers are kind of a mandatory requirement. Now, when you're running Kubernetes pods, right? Uh, that's kind of the runtime environment. 
Now, when you have multiple clusters and you want to connect these, right? You can either go inside Kubernetes and you know mess around the connectivity and kind of pay for sins of the past that we have done, you know, in the last twenty years, mm -hmm. and 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 confuse Kubernetes with networking concepts or abstract it out through a project like Network Service Mesh that allows your translation between the connectivity layer and the runtime layer. And I think that's the general concept. Mm -hmm. It is independent of 5G, it's independent of Edge or Core, but it's one of the building blocks to enable uh, more rapid telecom and cloud uh, technologies to come together. Right, and I think this is part of the kind of move that open source plays in these networks, which is, Kind of not massively explored and understood yet. So people understand Kubernetes as also container architecture, and it's going to have a role in telco. There's other projects as well, and you know, Open Daylight, which is what you know, Lumina represents and brings to the market as an SDN controller, NSN, and NSN, and how that plays into this. Um, all are linked to the fact that the control infrastructure and the glue that brings the vendors together in this is mm -hmm. open source in this world. And that's a, a kind of fundamental shift from the proprietary worlds we've seen, you know, historically in this environment. Yeah, and, and I'm going to point out a fascinating thing that has happened this year, okay? From the purest view of open source projects, which were kind of siloed in its own uh, developer community, right? Whether it's Open Daylight or PNFV, ONAP, NSM, uh, you know, you name it. From that view, with these glue logic pieces, that you know, vendors and users and developers have contributed. All of a sudden, you know, we're starting to get solutions, mm -hmm. and these solutions are now starting to get into commercialization and deployment. Right, so you will see a huge uptick of uh, open source deployments thanks to vendors like Lumina and you know, uh, foundations like LF Networking, LF Edge that we host that allow commercialization and deployments based on open source that really focuses on this glue. I'm glad you said, I'm glad the last word you said was glue. So Andrew, if you can segue from that statement to the market outlook for 5G network slicing and, and its relationship to what ARPIT was describing. Right, well I think network slicing, certainly of the show we're at here is kind of a, a much overused term, mm -hmm. but fundamentally uh, the, the interface or where this comes together is saying I want to give that, for example, that AR ex um, application I talked about mm -hmm. its own cut of the network. And mm -hmm. what that means, right from the base station through to the optical network, through the wireless network, obviously, to the compute and everything, has to be orchestrated to deliver that one slice for that one application so it gets the performance it needs and you're not kept hanging when you turn left and the screen hasn't moved with you. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, so to, so to do that, um, the orchestration and the open source elements of that are really designed to um, kind of make sure that regardless of the underlying vendor and the infrastructure, regardless of whether you're using Kubernetes or OpenStack or any, all of the above, you have the ability to, to, to kind of glue it all together and stitch it all together to deliver a single service. Uh, and, and that's really why open source has this kind of key role in this environment. Mm, interesting. So Andrew described uh, network slicing very well. Again, use case, Arput, can you give us a, a 5G network slicing use case that the viewers can, again, wrap their head around what that is? Uh, there's many, and I think the biggest one is all going to be segmented by the verticals, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like smart manufacturing would be a big Yeah, area. so that's exactly okay. where I was heading, okay. uh, where if you look at uh, where edge will play a big role, and I'm going to repeat these markets in a linear order. So for the first time, I think there's consensus yeah. on which verticals are uh, going to take advantage of uh, 5G network slicing and edge compute in general. Uh, the, 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 the highest one or the top one is manufacturing, mm -hmm. right? No doubt about it, right? Smart factories, uh, on-prem devices, uh, sensors, microcontrollers, anything that, you know, are requiring predictive maintenance, predictive analysis, um, uh, you know, data collection, et cetera, et cetera, right? Huge, huge efficiency cost savings. Next market is uh, that that's going to use this uh, the technology is, is um, oil and gas. Uh, huge uh, input there as well uh, from a refinery, from a exploration and analysis perspective. Mm -hmm. Then comes retail. Uh, retail has really picked up a lot of steam because there are remote office, branch offices, campuses, 
uh, that are all uh, interconnected. That yeah. gives the user, uh, you know, a retail, uh, you know, good good in-store experience. Uh, transportation, home, uh, fleet, connected cars, gaming. You know, it it there's a whole list of verticals that uh, you know foundations like LF Edge or or, or umbrella projects like LF Edge are focusing on with blueprints, and that's kind of uh, fundamentally based on you know 5G technologies, IoT requirements. Mm-hmm edge compute requirements, and a whole bunch of glue that comes through open source projects. Yeah. If you don't mind, Andrew, I'm going to walk walk the conversation back a couple paces. Mm-hmm. Are there different definitions of edge, and if so, why? Um, well, I, of course, the question really is, where is the edge? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where does that move? Mm-hmm. I think what we're saying, you know, historically, the edge has been, well, it's Britain miles terms, it, it's been, you know, a, 20, 30 miles plus from, from the consumer. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, we're saying it's a couple of miles away, mm-hmm. um, if that, uh, you know, depending on the geographic spread. And it, it's that shift to say the edge of where I'm going to put intelligence is where my edge really is. Mm-hmm. And by intelligence, we mean compute and the ability to move applications and workloads to that place. Yeah. Uh, so, so the geographic part of it really is the only definition that counts. Yeah. and and. Hmm. To solve this exact problem, right, we have under the LF Edge umbrella and the Linux Foundation, we have a glossary project, mm-hmm. which is a Wikipedia-style definition of terms, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and we are now, as a community, uh, zooming in on the following definition. Uh, uh, you know, to b- build on what, uh, what Andrew says, there is a proximity element, there is a mobility element, and then there is a latency element. Right, it's all kind of related, but mm-hmm. but sort of not right. And so, if you start off with, uh, and there's not one edge, right? There's probably, I think, loosely speaking, there are two types of edges at the macro level. There's a device edge, which includes on-prem edge in factories. It includes home edge mm-hmm. in the homes, and the uh, realization of those could be microcontrollers or gateways or whatever. And then there's the infrastructure edge, mm. right, which is the telco edge cloud, smart cloud, you know, multiple terms are being used, but it's really anything that is in that proximity that gives you anywhere between 5 to 20 milliseconds latency. Right. It's not a cloud data center. It's not a centralized data center. And and to that extent, what LF Edge is doing is it's unifying the communities that are solving this problem because there's an IoT view of Edge, there's a cloud view of edge. There's an enterprise view of edge and there's a telco view of edge. Mm-hmm. And we're bringing all of them together saying there's only, you know, a common unified framework. Mm. Andrew, I want to get to open source in just a moment, but before I do, just to kind of finish off or round out what Arpit was talking about in the edge space. So with edge comes data clearly, how do you decide, and both of you, how do you decide what gets managed at the edge and what data gets transported on? Well, I think to the extent that you can Whatever you need to do at the edge, you should do at the edge, and whatever you must push to the cloud, you must push to the cloud. Mm-hmm. Um, well, are there other factors to think about? So, well, the security. latency is key mm-hmm. uh, f- for sure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, security will be important wherever this this data is, and, and just simply that again, the orchestration of saying what happened deep in the cloud is now happening at the edge. All the things you used to do to protect in the cloud mm-hmm. must now be brought to the edge, and where that edge compute is, that's the beginning of this infrastructure. Is that an easier said than done process? Um, where are we on that? Right. So, if your security protocols for the um, for where for the centralized systems are in place and properly done today, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a case of extending them. Of course, there's complexity in that, um, and that's something that we have to work through um, as these things get deployed. But as long as the policies are are correct and tight, they should play out as we move move more to the edge. And I'll also say on the, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the policies that the telcos or any of the users are going to determine, right? right. So. Uh, there's also an initiative under LF Networking under the ONAP project, right, which mm-hmm. is the automation pro- pro- project, which brings the zero-touch policies to the edge, mm. right? So now, based on those policies, you can actually push down profiles to all the way down to the device edge, which, again, determines in real time, because no manual interventions needed, what data gets up, what data gets down. And I think to echo uh, Andrew's point, I think we're probably uh, aging ourselves, but in the networking world, 
30, 25 years ago, we had this famous saying, you know, switch where you can, route if you yeah. must, right? Yeah. <laughs> so process data as close to the app as possible. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. and only push it up if needed, especially these days. Right, and to go back to the security point and kind of tying that back into network slicing, one of the big benefits of network slicing is that you essentially create a private network for whatever it is that you're building. So when you think about some of the breaches we've seen in connected cars, where hackers have been able to stop a car on a highway, that's because they could reach the car on the highway because it was publicly accessible on the internet. So when you close that system out, and only allow those things that are allowed specifically to, to join it, then you, you have a really big differentiator and a, and a much tighter um, security ecosystem around, around the slice. So actually, this technology will enable a much higher level of security than has previously been possible. All right, Pitt, I wanna ask you uh, one of the final questions. Uh, we'll get to a bit of a futurist question with Andrew and then we'll wrap. Uh, when it comes to open source, and of course, you know this has been a discussion that's been going on for a number of years, now, sort of with the advent of the 5G network, uh, has the telco community fully embraced that open source is, is a solution for these 5G network capabilities? Do you see that yet? Or is that a conversation that's already passed? I think that's a one. Um, if you asked me last year, I would say, yes, we're starting to see it now. It's a given. It's a given. Okay. It's a given. So I can right? stop asking that question. Yes. <laughs> um, the... Operators have made a statement, and in fact, LF Networking as a community of operators uh, accounts for over 70% of the mobile subscribers through participating carriers, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much uh, majority of the of the carriers have already said open source is the way to start. Okay, so that one's a done deal. Mm -hmm. Now, in open source, then of course, there are projects like Open Daylight, ONAP, uh, OPNFV, there's multiple projects. Each of these projects have put about two to three releases worth of code to be ready for 5G. Mm -hmm. It's not straightforward, right? Yeah. You have to scale your register, scale memory, scale tasks, mm -hmm. scale processes. There is a lot of dirty work that developers have already done, mm -hmm. so it's all ready. And deployments are starting now. Uh, commercial uh, support from vendors and end users have picked up significantly. And I would say now the next big uh, game changer is the same philosophies of open source applied to the edge right. mm. and to the IoT domain. Mm. Interesting. Right? right. And, and so that's kind of the next big frontier for 2020. Right. And it's, it's interesting because uh, you know, the topics or the conversations we have with customers have, sh have shifted from the why why should we do this? Why is this That's important right, to, to the how exactly. and, and how quickly as well? Because very, you know, very well kind said. of at this, this point, right? Yep. All right, now I'm going to get, get to my futurist question. I probably asked you something similar to this before, but you just made a statement that was interesting. So this is this it was a great segue. Open source applied uh, to the edge. Uh, this time next year, where do you think that conversation would be? Uh, Exactly a year from now, right? We will have uh, a whole bunch of edge projects. We already have seven under the LF Edge, right? Uh, which are solving uh, telco cloud, edge cloud, IoT cloud, and enterprise uh, edge, right? Uh, positioning. Uh, we will have uh, probably three verticals that are in, in the deployment phase. Uh, obviously, the top ones with the most pain points are the ones going to start quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have uh, several automated deployments uh, in the telco space, right? So uh, you're not just you're not only flipping the radio to 5G, right, mm -hmm. uh, or the base station to 5G. Simultaneously, while you go and do that, you're going to put edge compute below the base station, and you're going to put edge compute inside the pod in a smart central office, mm -hmm. right? So you will have that infrastructure already done through open source, and the telcos, in my mind, have a upper end uh, or upper hand this time around. Mm. Right. You know why? It's the real estate formula. Location, location, location. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So linked to that is the journey, the parallel journey that these um, telcos are going through in automation mm -hmm. and digitization of, of their networks. Mm -hmm. And this is you know, open source being the key to enable that to happen. They can't roll out these services unless automation is done. And so the, the journey that, that many of them are on 
you know, through this year is to get the networks ready for 5G so that when that hardware shows up with that compute, there's not somebody manually trying to configure a slice. I mean, a sensor is not going to be on the phone saying, hey, I need service AT&T. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. going to happen, right? Yeah. There is no store. It comes up. 10 milliseconds registers automatically gets its policy. Very That's good point. Fair. Automation is 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 already ongoing and it will be ready. Uh, you know, in terms of deployment as as these 5G devices scale. Yeah. So it sounds like the mantra is location, 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 and automation, automation, automation. Power, well, not say powered by, supported by open source. How about that? Right. Okay. That's a good summary. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, our pit. Uh, thanks for your time. I think you're heading back to uh, the convention center a few blocks away. So we appreciate you coming down. It was a good Thank discussion. You. Thank you. Um, and again, I didn't uh, realize that you two uh, uh, just had met quite recently. So it was good to have you here on, on front of the camera, and uh, we can send that out to the world. So Andrew, uh, as always, uh, we've had you it's on. Uh, it was Barcelona was the last time I believe. Yeah. And that was a great discussion as well. It was yeah. with Arpit we, as well. We were yeah. There. yeah, that was great. So we'll probably do that again. Just that again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Looking forward. Thank Absolutely. You. All right. Thank you very much for your time. And once again, for our audience, Energy thanks our panel for speaking on the future of 5G Edge and Telco Cloud. For this executive panel on demand, please go to the networkmediagroup.com. So long.